Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor, yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the video, guys, can jet engines cough? Hmm? Might sound like a very strange question, but compressor stalls, which is what we're going to be covering today, is kind of the way that jet engines cough. Okay, it's a failure that is very, very hard to diagnose. It's quite hard to handle as well. And I'm going to give you four different things that you need to remember about compressor stalls. So stay tuned. This video is brought to you together with Audible. Now, if you have made a New Year's resolution to become a little bit smarter and to kind of, you know, satisfy your curiosity during the coming year, well then Audible is the thing to use. And that's what I'm going to use to listen to more books. And um, if you use this link below or text the code MENTORPILOT to 500-500 if you're in the US, well then you'll get a 30-day free trial plus one audiobook for free and two Audible Originals. So uh, check it out and let me know what you think about it. In order for you to understand what a compressor stall or engine surge actually is, we're going to have to go through four different steps. So we're going to start with talking about what and how the jet engine actually works. Then we're going to talk about what the failure actually is and then what causes it and how the pilots deal with it. And as always, there will be a quiz at mentorpilot.com at the end to make sure that you have paid attention. So if we start with how the jet engines work, now I'm just I'm not going to go through this and in any great detail, but it's important for you to understand the kind of principles behind it in order for you to understand the failure. So a modern jet engine tends to start with a huge fan. That's what you see when you're boarding the aircraft, uh, and that fan will give about two thirds of the thrust that the engine produces by sucking in and pushing out large volumes of air at a reasonably low speed. But if you go in a little bit closer and you look into the jet engine, you will see that just behind the fan, you have the compressor stage. Now the compressor stage starts with an inlet guide vane, which is exactly what it sounds like. It guides the air into the compressor. And then you'll have varying stages of compressors and stators where the compressor are basically tiny little wings that uh, that sole purpose is to push the air backwards into the engine and the stator vanes are there to kind of guide the air to give a proper angle of attack towards the next compressor stage so these compressors they keep pushing the air and making it you know more and more compressed until it is perfect kind of pressure to enter into the diffuser where we add fuel and then you have the uh, igniters that ignites the fuel that releases an enormous amount of energy which is then being led out through the turbine stage. Now the turbines they harness some of that energy to drive the compressor stages and then uh, the air gets pushed out towards the back of the engine, which also produces quite a lot of the thrust that the engine produces. So this, in theory, and in very short terms, is what the jet engine does. Now, a compressor stall is, just like the, the uh, name kind of suggests, a stall of one or more of the compressor stages. Like I said in the beginning, the, um, since the compressor stages are basically a set of wings that is set up after each other with a nice perfect distance, since they are wings it means that they could stall. And if one of these compressor blades stalls, well then it will affect the next compressor blade which will also stall. And if it stalls it cannot do what it's designed to do which is to push the engine backwards. So what can happen then is that pressure will very, very quickly build up in front of it and it will also release pressure behind it. So if a compressor stall happens, it will happen in a matter of a second. 
Okay, the stall will go from one blade to the other until all of the blades or part of the blades are stalled and an uncontrolled release of pressure will happen both towards the front of the engine and towards the back of the engine and this tends to happen simultaneously. Now the way that we will interpret this, the, what we, the pilots, will see and hear and feel is uh, there is going to be potentially flames going up both in front of the engine and in the back of the engine. That happens together with a large bang and after that follows vibrations. Now, depending on what kind of compressor stall you have, you might have a single compressor stall. In that case, you will only hear a that bang once and feel the vibration and then the engine will recover. Or if the reason for the compressor stall is still in the engine, well then it will come a bang, it will recover, it will come another bang, it will recover, it will come another bang and it will recover. And this is what we refer to as engine pumping. Okay? Then you will have many of these happening at different intervals, uh, it, depending on where you are. So if you're at low altitude with high thrust setting, they will be quite violent. And if you're at high altitude, um, at lower thrust settings, then they, these bangs will be more muffled and you might not feel the vibrations as much. Okay. So together with that, together with the actual feel and with the yaw tendency, because obviously as the compressor stalls, the engine will momentarily lose all its forward thrust capability. So you will have a yaw, you will have a bang, you will have vibrations. You will also have indications on your engine display that will show, in most cases, a, a rapid increase in exhaust gas temperature, in EGT. And that's because the uh, flow of air through the engine has been interrupted and so there's nothing cooling the exhaust gas temperature anymore. All right? So these are the indications that we will get inside of the cockpit. Now this can come with a quite substantial um, startle effect. Right? This is not something that the pilots are, are expecting. It comes very suddenly, it can be very, very nasty and feel very bad. And especially if this happens during the takeoff roll or during the initial part of the, um, of the departure, uh, air traffic control will obviously see the flames shooting out of the engine. And if they report that to the pilots, the pilot might faulty interpret the, what, the, what they're seeing as an engine fire. So this is what I was talking about in the beginning of the video, that it can be quite tricky to determine what it is and to actually diagnose the, um, the, the um, compressor stall. Um, because of the bangs that you hear, because of the yaw, it can be interpreted as an engine failure, which it is not, at least not to begin with. It can also be interpreted uh, as an engine fire, especially if air traffic control or uh, passengers are reporting flames to be seen. But the problem is that it's not a continuous failure. And what I mean by that is that we tend to train um, that the engine fails, in which case you'll have the engine spooling down, or severe damage to the engine where it just suddenly ceases. But it's obvious when you look through the engine instrumentation that this is what's happened. In the case of a compressor stall, it's not as obvious because it can recover. So you might have that sudden bang, the EGT rise, the loss of thrust, but then it will recover back to normal indications and then it might happen again. And every time that this happens, an equal kind of startle effect will happen and it will be equally hard to control the aircraft. So, so how, do we, how do we deal with this then? Well, the most important thing and what you have to remember when you, if you're ever in a situation like this as a pilot is that you need to continue to fly the aircraft and you need to divide the roles into the roles that we train in the simulator. So the pilot flying continues to control the aircraft, which can be quite tricky because remember you have these kind of yaws happening. Uh, so every time that you have the compressor stall happening, the aircraft will kind of lurch to one side, which means that you need to put a bit of rudder in to counteract it, and then it will recover itself. So you need to take that rudder away. So handling the aircraft and continuing to fly it can be quite tricky. On the other hand, the pilot monitoring needs to be the one who is dealing with the non-normal checklists. So in this case, the first part is always to identify the failure, which like I said, can be tricky. This might not be something that the pilots might have necessarily trained in the simulator. It's also not continuous. So you're looking at the answer instrumentation. When you're looking at it, it might look fine. And then suddenly you get one of these surges happening. 
So just to identify it can be hard. And that's why in our quick reference handbook on the 737, we have a combined checklist, which is called engine limit, surge and stall. So if we have identified it as a surge, well then it's the same checklist as an engine limit. And that helps if, for example, the EGT is rising to up or above a limit, that will lead us into the same checklist and the same memory items as if we decide and see that it is an engine surge or an engine stall. And what are the memory items then? Well, memory items, they are items in a checklist that we, the pilots, need to know by memory. And the reason we need to know it by memory is because they need to be done fairly quickly in order to, for example, save an engine from breaking up altogether. In the case of an engine limit, surge, stall, the memory items are auto throttle, disconnect, and that's to keep the auto throttle from adding thrust to the engine. Then confirm which engine it is so that you're not dealing with the wrong engine. And that engine, the affected engine, retard. So the reason that it says retard and not close is because you slowly, slowly pull back on the thrust until the surging stops. Because remember, depending on what has caused this, it could be a, um, it could be, for example, a bird strike that causes this, so that something has been pushed into the compressor and that's what's causing the uh, the surges to happen. It could be uh, icing inside of the engine, or it could be a failure of one of the compressor stages. Another reason that it can happen could be um, a bleed air failure. Because remember, I've talked about this in the previous episode about the bleed air system of the 737. Uh, the bleed air that's taken for de-icing the, the engine cowling or the wings and for pressurizing the aircraft and for temperature control is taken from the compressor stages, from the fifth and the ninth stage. If there is a sudden increase in bleed demand or a sudden decrease in bleed demand, that might cause the angle of attack on these stages to increase, which might cause a stall, which it might be the reason. So there are several reasons why an engine stall might occur. But one of the ways to get rid of it is to reduce the thrust on that engine. So this is what pilot monitoring is doing as part of the memory items. The engine is being pulled back slowly and when the surging stops, then you can leave the thrust lever there and you might still have some usable thrust from that engine. All right? So you're not closing it, you're not shutting it down. And in fact, when the engine has stabilized itself, then you can actually start reapplying thrust on it if needed. And if the engine surge doesn't reappear, well then you can continue to use the engine normally. All right? Now, if that doesn't sort it out, so you keep pulling the thrust lever back all the way until the thrust lever is closed, if it's still surging at that point, well then you will go through the checklist and the checklist will tell you to shut the engine down. But you'll do that at a safe altitude where you still kind of control the aircraft away from terrain and so on. Right? So why is this so important then? Well, it goes back to what I was telling you before about the misidentification of this failure. Because if you misidentify this as an engine fire, well then the engine fire uh, memory items are very different. They will actually cause you to immediately shut down that engine in order to preserve it and in order to, to, um, to turn out a, and to take out a, a potential fire. And that will then, of course, leave you without the thrust in that engine. Some thrust that you might have had if you would have just done the memory items for engine limit, surge, stall. Other famous examples of misidentification of a failure like this is to actually identify it as being the wrong engine. Because, uh, because of the intermittent nature of the failure, it's not obvious exactly what engine is causing the problems initially. So um, a, a very famous example of where that happened was the, the crash that happened outside of East Midlands Airport um, where a, a 737-300 had problems with one engine surging. But when they were identifying the failure, the pilots were not, they were quite new on type. They were not too familiar with the new engine instrumentation. And they, because of different misunderstandings in the communication with the cabin, they ended up shutting down the good engine. So they were left with one engine that was surging and one engine that was shut down. 
this led them to a complete loss of thrust which uh, had the aircraft um, crash just short of the runway outside of East Midlands. So it's very, very, very important that the pilot monitoring really looks at what the engine indications are and if he or she has any doubt, discuss it with the pilot flying and leave the pilot flying to fly the aircraft so that you don't both focus on this quite complicated problem and maybe end up, you know, not following the uh, um, the procedure that you need to follow or flying in towards terrain or something like that. So do take your time to identify this failure properly and then deal with it accordingly. Right? So that's what an engine surge or a compressor stall is. Now, if you have more questions about this, as always, bring them in below in the comments. And then also make sure that you have subscribed to the channel if you like these kind of videos and that you've kind of highlighted the notification bell. A huge thank you goes to the sponsor of this episode, which is Audible. Now, you know that I love listening to audiobooks, to news shows, to comedy shows. I do that almost every time when I go to work, when I travel in between the bases, or when I go up instructing, and even when I'm in my hotel room. Now, a perfect tool to do that is Audible. And a book that I think that you will really enjoy listening to is The Air Crash Detectives, where you get to follow a female air crash investigator as she brings you through some of the most famous crashes in history and what the mythology is to kind of determine the causes behind the crashes. It's really fascinating. So if you use this link here below, or if you're in the US and you text the code MENTORPILOT to 500 500, well then you'll get an absolutely free 30 day trial Trial, you get one audiobook for free and two Audible originals. So check that out. Let me know what you think. And before you go, make sure you go to mentorpilot.com for your latest aviation news and also to take the quiz. I have a link to the quiz here in the description and that will show whether or not you've actually paid attention during this episode. So have an absolutely fantastic day. Me and Patchy are going to go out uh, for a little walk and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Doggy. Right guys, I really hope that you liked that. If you want more content like that, more aviation content, well then, check this out. Uh, I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. See you inside of the Mentor Aviation app and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye-bye.